Hello, Bronwyn. Hello. How Thank are you? Thank you so much for being here. I'm so glad to be here today. So I wanted to start with asking you, uh, what was it like to grow up Bronwyn, this aerospace aviation dreamer? Tell us. Well, for me, it all started with Star Trek, honestly. And I'm just a huge fan of Nichelle Nichols. I mean, I was like this little Uhura. And I always followed that show and Captain Kirk and uh, Mr. Spock. And I don't even know if I expressed this to my family fully, but I've just always had this love for space and for outer space. And um, I thought, well, I want to be a fighter pilot and I want to be a commercial airline pilot. But women weren't allowed to fly fighters when I came out of high school. So I'm dating myself a bit. But I thought, well, I'll just work at JPL. I'll become an astronaut. Well, I didn't do any of those things. Um, but I did become an FAA certified drone pilot many years later, FAA drone pro, FAA safety rep. And I'm a corporate refugee, so did that for a really long time. And I'm a Trekkie for life. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So why this industry? Well. You know, this is the first time I think that civilians um, have a commercial opportunity to get into aviation and aerospace. I mean, forever, this has been something where there's a barrier based on your education, your access to work for NASA or to work for a, you know, a larger defense contractor. But as a civilian, to be able to now become FAA certified and then create uh, new technology is amazing. So me and 852,000 other Americans are FAA certified pilots. And so my heart was in the passion of this opportunity. And from a business perspective, you know, recognizing that this industry is growing to like 91 billion plus in the years to come, and I think that's a very early estimate of what it will be, um, is, was just the right opportunity for me to jump in and kind of blend in business experience and this passion that I've had since I was this little kid to really kind of go out where no woman has gone before, um, <laughs> in, at least in our national airspace. So this has been a, a great culmination for me to, to kind of pull all these things together. It's so interesting how it's accessible to civil civilians now. I mean, I've, I'm fascinated. I'm going to be a drone pilot. Now. Come on. All right. I can teach you. Let's, let's work on it. Um, and so then what do you do now? Like, what does that look like? Well, you know, I've kind of <laughs> taken this shift from being now a little mini Uhura to I feel like a Wonder Woman now because we get to fly above and actually capture aerial data for customers. And we are using, you know, state-of-the-art drones, not only just myself, but, you know, a team of pilots and all of us in the industry to capture data using sensors like thermal and, and LIDAR and uh, hyperspectral, multispectral things you can look up later. Easy for you to see. I know, right? <laughs> um, and take that imagery, transform it so that customers can actually use it to make real-time business decisions. And, you know, for us, we're doing that across, you know, critical infrastructure sectors like telecom, energy, utilities, wind and solar, um, also civil infrastructure, bridges, highways, roadways, dams. And then when you think about disaster, and you know, we've done work in that space, and then also climate and environment, but that's just, you know, a little bit of my world, but this is also spanning real estate and agriculture and entertainment. Um, the use of drones is, we're just starting to scratch the surface of what this will look like over time. But being able to be a part of this, this, this mix of bringing in new data um, that can save lives, but then also help people better understand the health of their assets is a huge opportunity for wow. all of us. I can only imagine the challenges in this. Can you speak to the challenges? Lot, lots of challenges. <laughs> um, you know, there, there are three that are kind of central for me. And the first one is really about regulations, because we're obviously very heavily regulated. And FAA does not play games. And so we have to make sure that when we're operating, we're not creating hazards in an already cluttered airspace. So you already have commercial aircraft, military aircraft, you've got helicopters, um, just general aviation, kites. Um, and so making sure that as we operate, we know the rules and regulations so that we're doing it in a way that is safe. 
um, because that's first and foremost, because the last thing any of us want is an incident. Um, the second part of this is really about our fuel sources for the future, because right now most of the mid-level drones are operating with battery power, and those are very limited for this size aircraft if you want to do work and inspect things and go far distances. So you are seeing electric um, you know, drones mm -hmm. as well as hydrogen-based drones. Um, but that's a real opportunity for the future as we think about how do we do more, how do we stay aloft longer. And um, that kind of leads me to this, this third one when I think about staying aloft longer, and that's, you know, public acceptance. Because a lot of people go, oh, my God, there's a drone. I'm going to shoot it down. And I'm like, don't do that. Um, that is not good. Um, but ensuring that people understand that when we're doing this as professionals, we're not there to capture data about you. Uh, we are there to do the work that we're doing. Now, public safety may have a different perspective on how they're using drones in that manner. Um, but for most of us, you know, that are doing this work, that's not the, the general mission, and we don't, um, that's not one of the rules and regulations that we work by. Peeping drones, no, no. No. No, no. Not okay. Um, what are one of, like, one of the more, or some of the more revolutionary applications coming to the commercial sector at this time? Well, you know, I think one of the things that many people may have heard about and get excited about is drone delivery. Um, a lot of markets, people are already getting pizzas delivered and sundries and other things, but this is a huge opportunity and it's one that's right here in front of us. And what this will look like is how many people are, you know, ordering Amazon every day all the time and other mm -hmm. companies. Well, now being able to get that much faster right to your door is going to be a revolutionary opportunity. And so we're trying to figure out how do we do that. So you think about some of the larger uh, companies that are delivering, Amazon and others, you're looking at probably a half a billion packages over the next you know, 10 years being delivered you know, right to your door. So the question is, how do we do that? Um, do we you know, take that to a logistics center and then that last mile delivery is delivered by robot, autonomous vehicle? Those are the things that we're working out. But then how do we manage all of that traffic in the airspace? You know, if you've got shoes coming over here to your house, Mish, and then you've got pizzas coming to my house, um, you know, how do we do that? And can you deliver, have it delivered to my, my fire escape? I am working on that. <laughs> I am working on that. <laughs> that would like be really easy, you I know? Would, I would love to do that. Part of our biggest challenge, however, is most infrastructure here, if you think about rooftops, there's nothing but HVAC on top. So, you know, how do we do this, both in an urban area or where you've got tall buildings? How do you do this for, resi you know, residential? So these are the many, many things that have to be worked through. And then flying beyond visual line of sight as we fly these longer distances from a central location to deliver. So there's a lot that has to be worked out. And you think about the medical aspects of this even, being able to deliver organs and you know, essential elements across town are revolutionary. And then also into rural areas and places where people are challenged to get some of the you know, health care and some of the items that they need in an emergency. I feel like you've gotten us into the future, but... What's way out? What's way out in the distant future for us? Well, there are some things that have already, you know, already in test right now, and that's something that I get super excited about, and that's urban air mobility. When you're now thinking about flying cars, and you know, just imagine that your ride share, when you call it up, is not just you know a car coming to your door to get you, whether there's a driver or not, but now taking you to a vertiport where you're able to now fly to the airport, fly to a business district, an entertainment district, and enjoy yourself and then fly back and then take that, you know, that, that last ride from that location in your ride share, your automobile, and, you know, back to, uh, to where you live. So that's being tested. It's in test. Um, there are some places around the world, even in the U.S., where this is being tested. A lot of test flights have to go into that to ensure, again, safety, to make sure the people are comfortable. The first ones will probably have a pilot, and then eventually they'll be autonomous, and hopefully people will get excited about that. Um, the other part of that will be cargo. You know, you've got you know, larger boxes, larger cargo that may not necessarily need to go by truck, but will now be able to go via a larger aircraft. And then the last one is one which I get super excited about, and that's emergency management. 
Because imagine that you're in an accident or you're stranded somewhere, you now have the ability for a drone, a larger drone, to come with a first responder on board, take care of you right there on the highway versus the larger helicopter that many of us have seen trying to get in and land. It's very expensive. And then air vac you to the nearest trauma center or nearest hospital. And so whether you're having a baby or whether you're lost in the woods, now either having the essential you know, elements brought to you to help you and or having the people brought to you to help you. That's incredible. The future is, is, is going to be amazing, and it's really not that far away. Not that far away, and it's in the skies. It is in the sky. Well, when I see drone friends up there someday, I'll be like, hey, I know Bronwyn. How about you? <laughs> well, I'm, you know, I, I've, I'm now from Wonder Woman, and now I'm Judy Jetson. I love it. So. Thanks, Judy. <laughs> thank you. Bronwyn, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.